We're going to end this section by looking at some applications. Um, now, arguably the main application is the sort of one that we started with, which is constructing this orthogonal vector given a pair of input, input vectors. Um, but there are other interesting uses of the cross product, uh, one being finding areas of parallelograms. This actually does show up later on, um, becomes important when you're interested in things like change of variables for double integrals and triple integrals. Uh, but um, for now, let's just focus on the parallelogram. So it turns out this formula here, it may look familiar if you remember a bit of geometry. So think about a parallelogram. So remember that a parallelogram has two pairs of parallel sides. something like that. And so given a parallelogram, and let's say these sides have lengths, um, well, I don't know, A and B, okay? Um, well, and let's say that we have an angle theta. Well, one of the things you can do, and now you have to be a bit careful because there are you know, more general parallelograms where this uh, doesn't quite work, but there, there's a sort of a visualization you can do where you just kind of, you know, this triangle here, if you chop this triangle off for them from this side and you slide it over to here, you'll have a rectangle, right? And now the length of the bottom is not going to change because this piece just moves over to there. Um, and so then what's the area of the rectangle? Well, it's going to be this base B times, well, the height, H, right? And a little bit of trigonometry, because that's a right angle, tells us H, that's the side opposite the angle, H is going to be A sine theta. And so we get a formula for the area of a parallelogram, which is base times height times sine theta. Great. Um, but one of the ways that you can kind of construct a parallelogram is... by sort of spanning it but with a pair of vectors. So B here could be the magnitude of a vector U. A here could be the magnitude of some vector V, right? Um, and then of course, this would just be another copy of V. Up here is another copy of U. Uh, and in that context there, then, well, B is the magnitude of u, h is the magnitude of v, sine theta remains sine theta, but theta is now the angle between those two vectors, and so this is just, using this theorem, it's just the magnitude of the cross product. Um, so in situations where you can't necessarily um, figure out the angle between those two sides of your parallelogram easily. And then one situation where that's going to come up is if your parallelogram is actually kind of sitting out in three-dimensional space somewhere. If you can come up with these two vectors that give you two of the four sides of your parallelogram, you can compute the cross product, find the magnitude, and you've got your area, and you never even need to know what the angle is. Um, so that's kind of a, a useful way of doing this. Now, if I'm looking at the first problem, well, I mean, it should concern you slightly because the two vectors that I'm given in question one, they're vectors in the plane, right? U and V. Now you can sort of, you can see the parallelogram that they span. There it is, right? We will find the area of that thing. Well, what you can do is, is you can kind of, you know, take, so u here is this is 2, 1, v is 1, 3. Um, you can sort of reimagine it like so. Take a three-dimensional coordinate system uh, and draw u kind of here in the plane. So now u is going to become sort of 2, 1, 0, and V. 
will become 1, 3, 0. So we just think of them as vectors in three dimensions that happen to have 0 z coordinate, right? And, and then it will be possible to calculate u cross v. And of course, because those both lie in the xy plane, u cross v is, is going to be vertical. So we expect it should only have a z component. And, and that's going to bear out when we do the calculation, right? If I, if I take the cross product um, u cross v i j k, so I'm going to do uh, 2, 1, 0, and then 1, 3, 0, right? So that, that column of zeros there means that when we do, for example, i, and we cover up this column here, I'm going to have 1 times 0, 0 times 3, so I just get 0i, right? When I do j, I cover up the middle column, 2 times 0, 0 times 1, so I get no j part either. And then I can do k, and there I actually finally get something, right? Um, I'm going to get 2 times 3 minus 1 times 1, right? So I get 2 times 3, subtract 1 times 1. And so I get, in this case, that's just going to be 5, right? 5k. And so, of course, the magnitude there is 5, right? So the area of that parallelogram is, is going to be 5 units, right? Um, and again, that's something you might, you might encounter this in a linear algebra context as well, um, where you might just be told, well, the area of this parallelogram is the 2 by 2 determinant um, that you get by writing the components of these vectors as columns in a, in a determinant. That's another way that you can do it, right? Good. Um, now, what about the second part, right? The first of all, it says, uh, confirm that you actually have a quadrilateral, right? So the issue there, um, if we label these points, let's label them, you know, A, B, C, D. Um, well, it's a quadrilateral, I guess, unless, unless three of those points are on the same line, then maybe it's just a triangle. Um, but do we actually know it's a parallelogram? Well. If so, maybe it should look well. Now, here's the thing. Who knows if this drawing is, is accurate? Is it A, B, C, D? Maybe it should be A, B, C, D. You know, there, there's a few different ways that we can, we can draw this thing. Um, the way I'm going to know if it's a parallelogram is I've got to calculate the, the vectors. So the vector A, B which is the, you know, the vector here. Uh, well, that's going to be just 2, as usual, head minus tail. So 2 minus 1, 3 minus 1, 2 minus 1. I get 1, 2, 1. Right? Um, AC, I get 4 minus 1, 5 minus 1, 3 minus 1. So AC is going to be 3, 4, 2. OK, uh, what about BD? BD. So that's going to do head minus tail here. Um, right, so I'm going to do 3 minus 2, 3 minus 3, 2 minus 2. Oh, interesting. I actually get um, 1, 0, 0. Ah, OK, so this is, not, this is not how I want to draw my parallelogram, right? Why? Because those two sides should be this. If it's actually a parallelogram, these should give me the same vector. We see that they're actually different, OK? So what we can do is say, OK, well, that's not going to work. Why don't we just try swapping those two? So let's make this one D. Let's make that C. And let's see if that works out any better. So a d. So now I'm going to do head minus tail. So I'm going to get uh, 2, 2, 1.
And if I do uh, now B, C, let's see, head minus tail here, 4 minus 2, 2, 2, 1. Ah, better. And, and now just to make sure, double check, confirm, right? We got it just to make absolutely sure we should check that last one. So C minus C minus D. So now I go to head minus tail here. So that's from D to C. We get uh, one, two, one. Ah, good. Okay. Checks out. All right. So now that we've we've confirmed that, we take this vector AB. That's going to be our U. A D. That's going to be our V. And so the, the area is going to be the magnitude of this u cross v. So, um, well, OK. Before we can calculate the magnitude, we first need the cross product, right? So let's go down here. What is u cross v? The i, j, k. So u, we have 1, 2, 1. For v, 2, 2, 1. And it's going to be i times. All right, I'm going to kind of do the calculation in one go here just to shorten things up. Uh, two one, those, notice those two rows are the same. That tells me that's going to be a 0, right? One, 2 minus 2, 0. Minus j, 1 minus 2. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. And then k, uh, 2 minus 4 is minus 2. So I get the vector 0, 1, and minus 2. And so the area of my parallelogram is going to be 0 squared, 1 squared, 2 squared. So square root of 5 for the area of that parallel parallelogram. 